Elliot, let's get right to our next guest. We just finished with 88-year-old Ralph Kiner. Let's go young. We're going young? We're going young. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a crafty left-hander. Do you have anybody? I got a crafty left-hander, a seven-time All-Star. His number 19 is retired by the White Sox, 84-year-old Billy Pierce. How are you doing, Billy? Great, thank you. Real good. So, Billy... I, when I was Googling you yesterday, you've got your number retired by the White Sox. you got your face in the outfield. I mean, you're all over Comiskey Park. Or what's U.S. Cellular, sorry. <laughs> well, it's always enjoyable to go out there and see your picture on the wall. I'll tell you, it's, a, it's always a thrill. And my, my grandkids and stuff like that, they enjoy seeing it. And the statue, it's a, it's a, the White Sox have been very nice out there. So it's, a, it's enjoyable to go out and see now, have you made it out to any games to this season? Oh, yeah. I was out there for the about, about three or four games I've been out there this year. And uh, most of the time we won. In fact, yesterday I had to be out. I was out there yesterday. and uh, But I had something important I had to come back home for. So I left in the fifth inning, and it was one-to-one tie. But uh, this is the way things have been going this year. Uh, you know, they lost out three-to-two, and... It's just been a tough year so far. So they need to get you out to the ballpark more often. <laughs> that might help a little. Who knows? How are you not in the Hall of Fame? I compared your numbers to Jim Bunning, who we had on last week, and they're real similar, but he's in the Hall of Fame and you're not. Those are things you never know. You know, uh, I mean, uh, as as I, we were talking about, things have been great for me the last few years uh, getting a statue out there at the ballpark and everything like that. And to be truthful, I've never, when I was playing ball, people didn't talk about the Hall of Fame as much as they do now. The only thing we talked about basically the Hall of Fame was Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, uh, players like this. And nowadays I think a fella can play one year and they start saying, boy, he's going to be Hall of Fame material. You know, it, it changes. But uh, my situation who knows? You know, you never know. I mean, we won a few ball games and had a great, a, a great time. I mean, I enjoyed it very much. Uh, it was a wonderful uh, twenty years that I put in. Yeah, it, it took a long time for one of your teammates, Nellie Fox, to make it into the Hall of Fame, which he did after his death. But it, 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 it took longer than it should have. That's no doubt about that. Yeah. Now, but as you say, once upon a time, it used to be a no-brainer. The guy either is or he isn't, and. Well, they've changed. They've changed a lot of the rules over the years. It was the sports writers that did it, then it was the fans that did it, then it was the Hall of Famers that did it. Now it's back to a committee that does it, and then there's the regular Hall of Fame, and then there's the Veterans Committee. So there's been there's been a few changes made over the years. You know, I love talking to players from back when because you could span baseball history. When Ralph Kinder, we just had him on, he talked about. He met Honus Wagner as part of the Pirates. You got to meet Babe Ruth. That had to be a thrill. It was a tremendous thrill. I mean, I, I yeah, I was you know just I was 17 years old in the Esquire All American Boys game, and that's he was at a radio show, and I met him there. And then I joined Detroit the next year, and I saw met him in the dugout, and he was starting to rasp a little bit. And then the next year he passed away. But to meet somebody like that, and at the same time in that one game, that kids game, I met. Mel Ott, and Carl Hubble, uh, and Connie Mack. I mean, there are some pretty good names, too. Definitely. And, and also, you're, you can remember the last time the Cubs were in a World Series in 1945 because that Detroit Tiger team that you came up with. That's where I came up with. I mean, let's face it, in 45, I was, 18, I was just 18 that April, and I, I threw batting practice. I sat on the bench. Rooted for the for, rooted for the Tigers at that time, and uh, it was a great series. It went seven games. It was a good World Series, and uh, we ended up ended up winning it. But uh, it was a close score series. Did you get a ring for that World Series? I, oh, definitely. Oh, yes. I that's one of my proud possessions. That ring's got to be a lot smaller than the White Sox one from '05. They don't. Uh, well, Jerry Reinsdorf was very nice, and I do have an '05 ring also. And to look to look at the two, there's no comparison. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, you talk about inflation. Definitely, there's ring inflation. It's, you see what the Blackhawks, the Stanley Cup championship rings were. It's like you wonder how a guy can put that on his hand and still be able to lift his arm. That's for sure. I mean, there's a lot of diamonds in those rings, and uh, and uh, and to go to the football Hall of Fame or the basketball Hall of Fame where there's such big fellas, those rings 
you could, they would weight your arm down, that's for sure. What do you think what's going on with the White Sox now? Ozzy's basically throwing his hands up. Do you think Ozzy's going to make it through the season, or do you think he's going to get the ax or quit? No, I think he'll, 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 he'll stick it through. I mean, he's a good manager. There's no question about it. it it's just one of the – we're going through a streak now that it's unbelievable. I mean, to, to get beat one to nothing on a no-hitter, to get beat three to two yesterday, I mean, we're getting men on base. We just can't get a hit in the key spots at all. And then there was a certain area there when the pitchers couldn't get anybody out. I mean, we're going through a just a terrible situation now for a, with a decent ball club. That's the same of the thing. Uh, this ball club, you look at it on paper, and you figure there's no way we could lose as many games as we're losing. But that's baseball. I, mean, I was with the White Sox way back. We didn't have as great a team as they do now, but we lost We lost at a tremendous life, either 11 or 14 games back in 1950. Uh, that's before 51, before the team really came along. And uh, just everything goes wrong. Look, so you, you won a World Series with Detroit. You finished your career with the Giants, and you won a World Series here. You spent all these years with the White Sox. Why didn't you win a World Series when you were with the Sox? Now, who knows? Well, there was a team called the New York Yankees at that time, and they were a tremendous ball club. And you look through most of the years when we had good, from 51 on, our team was a pretty good team at the White Sox. And, uh, but uh, who was winning all the pennants were the Yankees. The Yankees won every year except one year Cleveland won it, one year we did. You know why the Yankees won it all? Moose Scourin. He'll tell you he's the reason. <laughs> he was a Moose, a pretty fair ball player. I'll tell you, he was a good ball player. I mean, you know, when you can have a guy like Moose hitting fifth or sixth in the lineup, uh, you're, you know you've got a decent ball club. And when they had Maris, Mantle, Barra, I mean, <laughs> they had a pretty fair lineup over there. There's no doubt about that. And they had pretty good pitching. You went up against a guy named Whitey Ford, who uh, ended up in the Hall of Fame more than a few times. Oh, many, many times we pitched against each other. Well, he was a very, very good pitcher. That giant rotation was loaded when you were at the Giants. They had you, you had Gaylord Perry, and then you had Juan Marichal, right? That's true. And then, I mean, now, now Marichal and Perry were kind of semi-rookies, uh, especially Perry. Uh, but we also had Jack Sanford won 20-some games that year. Billy O'Dell won 19 games that year. I mean, we had a pretty fair pitching staff, I'll tell you. Uh, and uh, we just lost out, as you probably know in the records, in the seventh game of the World Series. McCovey hit a line drive with two on that we could have won it. But that's, uh, as, as we always say in baseball, one of the greatest pitches in baseball is the Adam ball, the ball that's hit Adam. If you don't have that, you're in trouble. Yeah, and, and he hit that ball about as hard as you could hit it. Oh, and he was he could hit him hard too. Was it a candlestick? Yeah. It was a candlestick, yes. Now, unlike Stu Miller, you didn't get blown off the mound at candlestick, did you? No, I didn't happen to, but I'll tell you it was windy out there. It was windy and at night it got cold. You had to wear a heavy jacket and we even had pockets to wear and gloves in July. <laughs> But it got cold out there. There's no doubt about that. Gaylord was talking last week to us about cork and bats. Did he cork your bat when you hit? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there's been a couple situations that we've run into with cork bats, but I don't know if there was a lot of them. And I don't think Gaylord used one. <laughs> I watched him hit. He didn't do that well. <laughs> now, but, uh, who was the best hitter you ever faced? Ted Williams. Ted Williams is the greatest hitter that I think you can talk to almost anybody that played ball through the 40s, 50s, and part of the 60s, and they'll all say Ted Williams is the greatest hitter. But, no question, Mantle was a very good hitter, but not in Williams' class as far as a hitter. Who was the best all-around player? Willie Mays. Willie Mays could do everything. He could run, he could throw, he could catch the ball anywhere in the outfield, and he could hit home runs, and he hit for a decent average. He, he, to me, I mean, there's many great ball players, but all around, from what I've seen in, in my day, Willie Mays would be number one. Now, Mays has been the answer more than a few people when we ask that question. Do you think his career suffered because of the Giants moving out of New York into San Francisco in an era when people, if a game's on the West Coast, they had no idea how it ended? I don't believe so. Um, I know when he first went out there, they were not, the fans were not 
there, they were thinking still about the AAA ball players. They had a fellow named Lyons and a couple other ones that hit a lot of home runs and things like that. But as the years went on, they got to respect Willie more and more and more. And I don't think it hurt his career any because Willie hit the ball a lot of times to center field, right center, and right field that could with the wind would carry. And he hit them hard enough in left field. But the left field was a tough field if the wind was blowing in out there because it was pretty strong. Yeah. Now, contemporary ball players, where would you put a guy like, say, Albert Pujols? Not this year. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. It's surprising. I mean, it's unbelievable. I've watched him over the last three or four or five years, and he has been a tremendous hitter. And he, and he looked like he could hit within any era at any time. And what's happening this year, I have no idea. Maybe it's these contract problems. I don't know. But uh, I think nowadays there's a lot of pressure put on some of the players, either trying to equalize the highest salaries or get more, and whether it's them or the agents, I don't know who it is. But uh, it certainly hasn't helped a lot of the ball players when there's still contract negotiations during the season. Yeah, now he's in a contract year, and the difference for him is millions and millions. Back in the day when you were playing, if a guy was in his nah, – they didn't have contract years, but the difference would be 10000 15000 if he was lucky. Sometime it was 500 <laughs> It was It was just so different. I mean, we, we were only allowed to sign one-year contracts. There's no question about that. There were no bonuses that could be written into the contracts. And it was just the way it was, and there was no such thing as free agency. When she, I signed, I know, when I was 17 – and I was 37 when I quit, and six months later, I got my official release. But that was that was 20 years taken up there that you had no choice on what ball club you were going to be with if you were traded or wherever you went. Yep. So there's been a lot of changes in that. What do you think about Mark Burley? Mark Burley says, you know what, this might be my last year pitch, and I made enough money. I want to go enjoy my life. Well, knowing Mark a little bit, you never know what he's going to do. He can be a character. I mean, he, he has a lot of fun with the game. He enjoys it, and he enjoys life. He could be one of the few that I would say he might do something like that, but I would doubt it rather much because he, he enjoys playing ball. That's what you have to do. You have to enjoy playing ball, and a lot of guys today don't enjoy playing ball. They just are in it for the money. But thank you again, Billy, for your time. We really appreciate it. Very glad to be here. Thank you.